Tony Montana, turn your microphone on, you bro. Can hear me? I can hear you. What's up, God? Bro? I'm 21 years old. I've been watching you since I was like nine years old. First hitting color. My man. My man. What, what city are you from? I'm from bro? Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah, I be forgetting, man, that I've been around for a long time. <laughs> and some, some of y'all were born in like 2004. I was, yeah, I was born in 2001. Oh, yeah. I've been watching you. Yeah. I've been watching you and signing at the TV since I was nine years old. My man, man, much respect to that, man. I, I, shout, I, shout out to all my young folks in here, man. Where, where are my, my 2000 babies? Where are the cats who were born in the early 2000s? Where y'all at? Put a hand up if you were born in the early 2000s. It's amazing. Nigga, I got clothes older than y'all niggas. <laughs> Nigga, I still got belts and shoes older than some of y'all in here. <laughs> Shout out to the youngins, man. You dig? Shout out to the youngins. I love it. You dig? But I was saying earlier that those videos of the the Sukihanas and all of that, I go watch that movie on Netflix that they clone Tyrone. Really go, that's a very good movie. I'm so surprised that they even got it through Netflix. And I, I think they got it on Netflix because the guy, the director, Brother Joel, um, he put a bunch of stereotypical stuff in there. And I think he went to the suits up there and, and presented it with all of the stereotypes so they were so happy to see the stereotypes the the hidden message beneath it i don't even know if they probably caught it you know what i'm saying it's like the movie the spook that that sat behind the door in the 1970s um the black exploitation movement was real large um all of these cheap movies would be produced a lot of times independently and the major studios, they would just kind of write a blank check to them. And it wasn't that much money. You know, you can get a couple of hundred thousand dollars and make a movie back then. And, you know, it'll, it'll, you send it to the urban theaters and it make money. We were going to the theaters like crazy in the 70s. We were flooding the movie theaters. So damn near anything you put out that was black between 1971 and 75, it was going to make some money. We just wanted to see black stuff on films. And plus, all of those theaters were empty because white people fled to the suburbs. So now black people were getting in those theaters, watching movies, and we we're having a great time. So in the 70s, all you had to do was put drug dealers, pimps, hoes, and um, niggas with guns in movies. And bam, the, the major studios would write a little check for it to get produced or whatever and then put it on out. So they did the same thing with the movie called The, the Spook Who Sat By The Door. Um, one of the studios put it out thinking that it was going to be another one of those jive sucker, um, pimp hole, get whitey movies. They had no problem with that. But the movie, there was an underlying message to it. The movie was actually about gangsters and, and, and drug dealers coming together to wage guerrilla warfare against the government. So when they found out what the movie's undertone really was, the white executives, they were like, oh, damn. And then the federal government, the FBI, went around theaters around the country. They pulled the movie. They literally went to theaters around the country and they were like, oh, hell no, y'all. We, we can't show this movie. The federal government went in theaters and started pulling that movie. The movie was out of rotation until like the 80s. But yeah, they pulled the movie because at the time, remember, you had um, the Black Panthers were still popping. You had organizations like the um, um, BGF, the Black Liberation Army. You had black organizations that were really putting in some work in this country. They were waging guerrilla warfare. They were hijacking planes and they were blowing up police stations. So now you have this movie promoting that. They panicked. And the executives at the 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 film studio they didn't catch on they didn't catch on to the underlying message so that ties back into this they clone tyrone i, I don't even know if the executives at netflix really understood you know how deep the movie was the underlying message in it you know 
because that's a hell of a deep movie. It's a real deep movie. Y'all really need to watch it. Shows basically how stuff in the hood is controlled by white people. All of the negative stuff, they clone all of the negatives and push it in black communities, which is actually true. Just like with the Sukihana thing, I, I, I made a tweet earlier that got the white supremacists mad. I said, hey, man, the Suki, the videos of the Sukihanas and all of these musty hood rats twerking, that's white supremacy because they're the ones who are financing it. And the people who consume it are primarily white. When you go to Rolling Loud and all of these rap concerts, look in the audience. It's primarily white people in these audiences. A lot of these rap shows out here is primarily white audiences. And the thing is, the the dirty hood rat culture of the twerking all over the place, that's something that white society likes to promote. Black society, we're always condemning that. That's been condemned left and right by black society, for real, for real. The only people who co-sign it are the hood rats and dusty niggas. Let's be real. Let's keep it a buck. When we see the Sukihanas and all of that dirty, musty twerking all over the place. And, and here's another thing. A lot of these broads are coked up. That's another thing, too. When did y'all make cocaine cool? You got a lot of these old cocaine sniffing niggas out here now. That's like the new thing. Ig, a lot of these women out here are coked the hell up. Let's keep it a buck. It ain't just weed. These are cokeheads and the whole nine on whatever drug. But let, let's be real. Let's on some street shit. Them dirty twerking hood rats that you see in these videos, square black society and upscale black society, they don't co-sign that. And truth be told, real street niggas, for real, don't co-sign that. Let me tell you, real street niggas don't like dusty shit. If you're a real street dude, a hustler, I'm talking about when I say, when I use the term street nigga, I mean a nigga who's getting money in the streets, not just a nigga hanging out in the streets. If you just hanging out in the streets, you ain't no real fucking hustler. Hustlers don't hang out. Hustlers got better things to do than stand on a corner with dusty niggas because ain't no money in that. And if there were was some money in that, you would have another nigga standing on the corner for you. You understand? Real hustlers ain't standing on nobody's corner bullshitting around unless you checking some paper. But the thing is, a real hustler, you ain't going to have no use for one of these dusty twerking hood rats. They're the most useless motherfuckers in the game. If you got one of them dusty twerking hood rats, let's say, nigga, you trapping. You, you're not going to leave your work around that <laughs> keep it a buck if a nigga got a trap house somewhere you you got some bricks somewhere are you really gonna leave your your stash around some musty twerking ass hood rat with a janky weave and a uh, possible coke problem really and if you're sending them on the blade you damn sure ain't gonna get one of them dusty hood rats because they ain't gonna make no paper but real hustlers don't even like that man real hustlers don't fuck with that dust begats dust Dusty hood rats only be around dusty niggas. You know, let's keep it a buck. They're useless to real, real hustlers. That's why when you see on first 48, whenever something go down, nigga, it's the dusty hood rat. When y'all dusty niggas be out here shooting people, you accident murderers, when y'all shooting people, it's always the dusty hood rat is the one who's giving you up. <laughs> They're the first to give you up. When they say on first 48, um, yes, we got Pookie Johnson um, from an anonymous tip um, led us to Pookie Johnson's residence. The anonymous tip is a hood rat. All right. Whenever you hear the term anonymous tip, that means an anonymous hood rat. Some hood rat gave you up. You dig? Some bummy hood rat didn't tow it on your ass. And then you get in that room and then you start telling just like the hood rat. You start telling on everybody else. Yeah. Dust begats more dust. So, yeah, that's useless to square black society and to the underground economy of black society, the hustler class. Hustlers don't like dusty niggas, nor do they like hood rats. Dusty niggas can't cut it around no real hustlers either. You don't want no dusty nigga around 
the dope spots. You don't want no dusty nigga around the blade. If something go down, this emotional dusty nigga starts shooting, and then you make the whole blade hot. You make the whole block hot because some emotional dusty nigga that came around acting a fool can't control his emotions. Yeah, y'all better y'all people get the game twisted. They get the game real twisted. Yeah. Let me get a couple of more folks in here. Oh, where are my DC people? Let, let me. My people in DC got mad at me. My people in DC got mad at me. Where are my Washington DC people? Because I, I make jokes about my cities. I, I make jokes about Atlanta. Because you know Atlanta got some real funny style stuff. And I put a video up of um, it was a video clip somebody sent me of a dude. He was a um, a thug. Some dude. He was looking like a thug. He had a wife beater on. And he had some jeans that were sagging, but he had on some high heel shoes. And I said, this is how niggas in D.C. sell dope. And boy, some niggas, D.C. got mad at me. Some of the people in Washington, D.C. like, oh, damn, why you do us like that? First of all, y'all know I love Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C., one of my favorite cities. They they support me a lot. Washington, D.C. shows me a lot of love. But y'all know good and well, y'all got some moist fucking gangsters in D.C., Y'all know that. D.C., they got some homo thugs out there that I have never seen anywhere else. And y'all know it. Come on. Y'all don't don't lie. Y'all know what y'all got out there in D.C. Nigga, D.C. got, I'm, I'm not even exaggerating, they got LGBT street gangs out there for real. And they're really about the business. I mean, real gangbangers who would like LGBT <laughs> for real, for real. They be sagging, but they be having on thongs. And these niggas is really with the business. And we've seen them close up. We were, I've, I've said the story many, many times. Me and my dude Ola, um, we got stranded in Washington, D.C. I was out there doing a lecture and we were kind of doing some running around. And this was before Uber. And the taxi drivers wouldn't pick us up. You know, the, the, the taxi drivers were on that funny style shit. We couldn't get a taxi. So we were walking just for hours trying to find a taxi and trying to find our way back to the hotel. And we fucked around and went over there around, I think, DuPont Circle, one of the places. And um, we ran into a gay street gang. <laughs> and um, I was scared. Because I'm like, you know, what if these niggas try to initiate us in the gang? <laughs> yeah. What if they try to jump us in <laughs> and then we lose? So, yeah, I, I, I had never seen homo thugs. These niggas had on wife beaters and flip flops and shit. I'm like, what kind of gang is this? These niggas. Uh, doing the most. <laughs> they had bandanas around their heads, but the bandanas had rhinestones on them. I'm like, what kind of fucking gangsters are these? What the fuck kind of gang banging is this? I ain't never seen rhinestones on a nigga bandana. So I'm like, I'm going to have to walk across the street. I'm not, you know, trying to confront these dudes. But shout out, I love D.C. Shout out to D.C. You know, let me get, uh, we've got a lot of folks in here. Let's get, um, okay, who we got? A lot of folks. What's up, brother Dominique? I see you, brother. We got a Red Joker, NYCT girl. And by the way, guys, don't forget, we got a um, comedy jo uh, um, comedy vibe happening at the Hidden History Museum, August 12th, Saturday, August 12th. That's in a couple of weeks. Get your tickets at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. And we're going to have a rap contest up there. So that's going to be interesting. And we're going to give $500 to the best rapper there. We're going to do the rap contest. Then we're going to have the the comedy show. And um, my man, Dwan B, is going to be hosting. And the comedy show is always phenomenal there. So get your tickets at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Hiddenhistorymuseum.com, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get, um, who else we got? Let's get chemistry, or the chemistry in here. 
Brother Chemistry. Hey, what's up, Tariq? What's up, Chemistry? How are you, sir? Oh, well, yeah, Kim. Can you hear me, man? I can hear you. What's going on, brother? What's up, Tariq? Hey, man. Um, first, pleasure meeting you at the uh, 2023 uh, FBA conference at the FBA. Yes, Expo. sir. Um, inspired by your work, inspired by your music, particularly as sang to Brian Layla at the uh, 2020 conference. So I was, yes, yes, sir. I was, I was wondering when is the next expo because I'm working on my music, inspired by your work. I want to perform. Okay, well, I got to see some of the stuff you got, but I'll let you guys know when the next event is coming up. But those events, boy, they take a lot out of you. Boy, those events take a lot. So I, I'm not sure when the next event is going to be. We, we, we're going to be doing a lot of events at the Hidden History Museum. That's what we're going to be doing. So a lot of people are going to have to come out to the museum. Um, but um, I'm, I got to hit the road, too. I got to start, you know, a lot of people have been wanting me to hit their cities up. So I keep everybody posted on that. Uh, Miss Kitty, hop on, Kitty. Or, am I saying your name right, K-City? Yeah, K-City, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good, man. What city are you I'm in? I'm in Chicago. There you go. What's on your mind, man? Um, well, thanks for holding this space and being on Twitter. You brought me to Twitter uh, during the pandemic, but I was just wondering, do you plan on staying on Twitter? Because everybody seems to be, you know, undecided about that, and... Do you think the SAG uh, strike is um, due to the advancement of color people? And um, they said something about top black executives have been dismissed uh, since the strike. I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on that. Oh, got it. Thank mm -hmm. you, dear. You know what, what the problem, the problem is, I think um, in the industry, they're using AI to um, do a lot of the writing for them. They're doing a lot of stuff using AI and computers. So they're relying less on the writers. And I think that's becoming a problem for a lot of the writers now. And plus they're using, they're doing a lot of these reality-based shows where you don't have to pay the writers. You understand? So you can just kind of skip over them by just making everything reality-based. So, you know, the writers are like, hey, come on, damn. So, you know, hope they get it together. Hope they get everything together. All right. Let's get um, a couple of more people in here. Let's get a couple of more because we got a lot of folks in here. Uh, let's get um, Blue Ninja. Blue Ninja. Didn't you? I, I, your name sounds familiar. Blue Ninja. What's up, man? When, while we're waiting on Blue Ninja, we got a person called Democratic Coon. Uh -huh. So let's get Democratic Coon in here. That's his name. Democratic oh, shit, Coon, what's you, up, Tariq? I didn't know he was going to let me up. Yeah. yeah why, why, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why is your name Democratic Coon? <laughs> oh, shit. You know, because all the Democrat Coons and shit, like the Boule class and shit, it's just like poking yeah. fun at them pretty much. No, no doubt. Okay, brother, that's what's up. I thought it was somebody who been who was about to come speak some truth, coon to power. Yeah. So, Blue Ninja, you you good? What's up, brother? Oh no, I can hear you loud and clear. I'm sorry for the last time. No, I'm just saying, hey, what up, brother? And um, no, uh, been seeing a lot. Uh, seeing that the deep state is trying to do their thing, but uh, they're losing and. Uh, we're going to get our stuff back, it seems like, but uh, not doing no hopium. There's no hopium yes, in this. There you, you know? go. Okay. Yeah, I remember him. I remember him. Okay. Uh, okay. There you go. He's, he's, he's going to do a bunch of cliches. You know. But God bless him. All right. Let's get um, Maul. I guess why I can't see for it, boy. Little bigs, I cannot see worth a damn. Hello, what's up, brother? I'm, I'm trying to look. I can't see for shit, man. What's your name, brother? Mouth, mouth, little bigs. There you go, mouth, little bigs. What's on your mind, How you brother? Doing, man. Yes, sir. I just want to, you know, you know, salute you, man. Thank you. 
you know, yes, for sir. all you do, for all the work you do, because people don't understand, like, what you do, bro, you know, that take a lot of strength, a lot of courage, you know, sticking up for our people, man. And it's so I know it's Real a lot strong. of people who don't express their thanks and gratitude for that alone, bro. You know what I'm saying? I That's just want to say thank you, bro. Thank you for the Hidden Man. Color series. That was, you know, a series that had a vital part in helping me step into consciousness and get on the right path, man, coming out to join and shit like that, bro. So I want to thank you for real, for real. Man, I appreciate that. That's real talk, man. Much love. I, I really appreciate that. And I like to see brothers, you know, they get out of a situation and then they, they kind of rise up consciously up out of it, man. I, I really love and respect that. Man, did y'all see a post? I posted some earlier. There's this white supremacist suspect who was on Twitter, you know, making little greasy comments about black folks like, oh, um, black people are allergic to fathers or some shit. Like, yeah, there's no black fathers, something about black people are allergic to black dads or some shit. And he has some tweets talking about, yeah. He opposes reparations for us and whoop de whoop. So then, early this year, he was tweeting about his girlfriend and left him, and he's heartbroken and whoop de whoop. Oh, he's she didn't block him from all of the platforms. And then a few weeks ago, he was like, "Oh, I'm not doing good. Everybody pray for me." And then one of his relatives popped up and said, "Yeah, you know, we we trying to get the funeral arrangements because old old Derek." He he died. So it sounded like he didn't took himself out or something. And they're like, yeah, he couldn't get over the broken heart and whoop de whoop and yeah, condolences. And so people got some mixed feelings about it. They were like, well, should we take the high road? You know, since he died, even though he was a suspected white supremacist, you know, should we mourn the the tragedy of his death? Or should we smoke on some of them Derek packs? Is it good riddance? You know? And and the interesting thing, all of the other white supremacists are in the comments. Oh God, you guys are so insensitive. That's what I don't like. Don't don't if we choose to be sympathetic, that's our choice. Y'all are not gonna shame us into being sympathetic for a damn suspected white supremacists when you guys sit up here and mock the death of black people all the damn time. See, it ain't funny when when niggas start because people in the comments going in on dude. They they mocking him, they they clowning dude for getting murdered. And they they're saying that it's possible that his chick left him for a black dude. So that the, the the knife really went deep, if that's the case. But yeah, these white supremacists sit up here and mock us all the time. And when the tables are turned, we're supposed to rise above it. We're supposed to take the high road. Nah, maybe what if we want to go down your road? Maybe what if we want to be like you? Y'all think it's funny and comical and satirical when somebody's is packed up out of here. Right? Y'all made it cool to kind of get a get a kick out of somebody um, you know, eating the dirt, All right? Y'all the ones made it cool. Y'all made it. Y'all y'all sit here and make video games about Trayvon Martin and little video games and songs about George Floyd. Y'all be cockeyed and kicking, but then all of a sudden we supposed to everybody got to bow down and bow ahead when it's one of y'all. Let me find out if that girlfriend left that dude for a brother. Because I'm still trying to find out who she left him for, nigga. That would be funny. I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck. I like to tell I don't like to mock anybody's death. But nigga, if this racist <laughs> offed himself because this lady ran up on some soul pole, nigga, I'm going to have to pull a little something out for the ancestors on that one, brother. I'm sorry. I got to post something out for the ancestors. That would be funny. That could be a new porn. Adam 22 can produce that. <laughs> Shout out to Adam 22. <laughs> Man, we got a lot of y'all up in here tonight doing what we do. And um, 
speaking of the hidden colors, you guys, if y'all don't have the hidden colors movie, go to hidden colors, um, hidden colors film.com and go to buck breaking movie.com and American dash maroon.com to check out the movies, all of them and hidden history museum.com to everybody give your um, contribution to the museum to keep the museum going a very important black institution that we created from the ground up. It's very important that we get all of the support we need for that. A lot of people ask what they can do. You can definitely support the Hidden History Museum at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. That's a very important institution because it's something that's for us, by us. You can come there and nobody's pushing an agenda in any kind. And the only agenda is black empowerment. All right. Should I get one more? Raise your hand. Let's get one more because I'm not trying to be here too, too late. It's already almost 1230 our time. So yeah, raise your hand if you want to get on. If you want to get on, raise your hand, ladies and gentlemen. All right. And I see a lot of y'all down here on the bottom. All right. Let's get, um, let me see, which one, who are the, I want to get some new faces in here. Let's get um, FBA Pizzazz. FBA Pizzazz. What's up, brother? Hello. What's going on, my brother? How are you? I'm good, Mr. Pizzazz. What's on your mind, sir? Well, I was curious. Um, well, first of all, man, I go all the way back to uh, like Made with you and all that stuff when you was on MTV, got reintroduced to you when you came to St. Louis and turned things out during the uprising, man. And so much love to you, brother. Thank you for everything. I appreciate that, brother. Yes, um, you know, when they doing the movies like um, they clone Tyrone and Us and like The Matrix, Man, I was just curious, do you think they trying to tell us something or is it more about, hey, man, you know, they it's just it's just film. To me, I feel like it's a little truth in it. I just don't know how much truth. Right. That's a very good question, brother. You know what? Because I think a lot of our directors, a lot of the black ones, they'll try to give us what's called eggs to kind of find to kind of get the game out of. Because all movies, man, a lot of movies tell messages. Sometimes they give subliminal messages. A good filmmaker knows how to give a message without overtly saying it, especially black filmmakers. Um, just the movie Us, again, that movie, I think Jordan Peele threw some real good Easter eggs in there for us to catch. The whole narrative to me, it was about immigration. The whole Us thing, that's where we get the term tether. It was a lot of nuggets in there that we got to catch, a lot of allegories. Even the word, the, the name of the film, Us, that's another play on what? U.S., the United States. And it was about these Black people just living their lives, and then there's an underground of other Black people who look like them trying to replace them. You dig? And you turn it into a horror story narrative, but the allegory is similar to immigration and hostile immigration. You understand? That's a real deep movie. And there's some other stuff that was deep about it. In the movie Us, remember when the Tethers were living underground, what were they eating? They were eating raw rabbits. And in slavery, do you know, black people used to view themselves as rabbits. We would use rabbit allegories for ourselves. We would come up with these allegories like Br'er Rabbit. That was a popular allegory with black people because we saw ourselves in the same position as a rabbit as um, in a system where you're powerless. So we studied rabbits and we saw that rabbits had to be more cunning and manipulative in order to survive. So then we created these Br'er Rabbit narratives, this um, cunning, manipulative um, type of character that could outsmart and use his wits in order to get out of danger. So we viewed ourselves in the same realm as rabbits. So that movie Us, where the, the tethers are eating the rabbits, y'all, a lot of folks won't catch stuff like that, but that's some heavy shit. You're eating the rabbits. 
and you're trying to be like the people there. Heavy stuff, man. Real, real heavy stuff. But yeah, the, the rabbit allegory, many of us who were enslaved, foundational black Americans, we would use rabbit allegories for ourselves. That's why if you look at the um, old Disney cartoons, the Br'er Rabbit, they would have all the, everybody would be slaves. Remember the Br'er Rabbit cartoons? Go look at all that stuff. Go look at all of that stuff. Look at the cartoons from back in the day. Those were very telling. You know? Real heavy stuff. Let's get um Greg in here. Greg? Hey, what's going on, Tyreek? It's Greg. I'm good. It's Greg, Greg from 313. Um, My man. Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I just wanted to tap in and say, stay on these tethers bumper. Yes, sir. Okay. Real talk. Thank you, Greg. All right, let's get uh let's get Dutch. Let's get Dutch in here. Dutch. Oh, hello. What's up, Dutch? Well, this is my first time joining. I just wanted to say I appreciate everything you do. And that's yes, sir. And that's really it. Okay. Uh, what what city are you from, Dutch? Uh I'm from Texas, but I'm from Houston. I'm in there you go. Florida now. All right, and they actually your phone, your phone is hella janky, Dutch. I don't know. It's very late in Texas. Why is your phone that janky in the middle of the night? That means you're out doing something. I should have asked. I hung up on him by mistake. I should have asked, what are you out there doing? In Texas, it got to be like two o'clock in the morning. There's nothing open except taco trucks and legs. Uh, what are you doing out at that time of morning, brother? In Texas, there's nothing out in the streets right now. So I hope you're safe with whatever you're doing out there in the streets. Let's get Trenton. Trenton, hop on, bro. Yeah, what's up, Tariq? How you doing, man? I'm good, Trenton. What's going on? Hey, yeah, they, they always get sensitive. Like, they, like, online, they'd be like, you know, George Floyd would have been so-and-so. So, you know, I hit them back with the, you know, January 6th was a great day. Rest in peace. Uh, uh, Ashley Babbitt, you know what yeah, I mean? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't so funny <laughs> that when Ashley Babbitt, oh, they wanted everybody yeah. to prop Ashley uh, Babbitt. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And yeah and thank you, brother. And yeah, when the when the cop, the black cop who produced justice with Ashley Babbitt, all oh, the blue lives matter didn't matter no more, right? It ain't about all believe all cops protect our boys in blue. Uh, wasn't all that no more. When the when the tables are turned. Yeah, and Ashley Babbitt, she'd been trolling in my mentions before. If you go look at some of her old tweets, she would be in my mentions trolling her white supremacist gibberish. Yeah. Man. Yeah, one thing, white supremacists, boy, they hate to get punished by black people. Oh. Any type of punishment from black people, that it's the end of the world. It is the end of the world for them. You know, they, they, it, they, it always has to be some kind of different parallel justice. We, we can't be treated like them. We're the ones we got to do the punishment. They can't be punishing us now. Yeah. But anyway, let me get out of here, guys. Um, go to HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Um, make a contribution to Hidden History Museum. And also um, get your tickets for the uh, no, not October. August 12th comedy show slash rap contest slash mixer slash turn up. We have a good time at the museum and you need to come on down and have a good time with us. Anyway, y'all, that's been it. Puppy Akute and Lolo Vey to the family. Y'all be good.